Right, okay guys, I mean we managed to help those people down in Starlight Drive. Uh, I think the next thing I want to be focusing on is this water purification system. Yeah, it's the water treatment plant down here. That's to help those robots down in Grey Garden. I fixed up your your power armor there, McCready, so you should be should be in better shape. I don't know. I don't know what's down there. I don't know why that pumping facility is not working. But we we better help these settlers. I mean, I know these are robots that seem to be able to defend themselves, but that's a that's a pretty strategic place. That I mean, it's just overlooking the river. I mean, if we can if we can help them, maybe they'll. Maybe we'll sign up and uh, let us uh, expand that settlement and gives us a good defensive location. I mean, then we're down to Oberland Station. They weren't too interested at the time, but you know, if we can get Great Garden on board, you know, might interest them as well. And we'll start expanding down here. Well, anyway, it's all wishful thinking. We don't actually do anything, so. It's a fair trek, so let's get going. In fact, I think I might might as well take advantage of that uh, that codex that uh, the folks are telling me about. Uh, yeah, it seems to be picking up quite a few things along the way. That's useful. Uh, so, what about these Brahmin? How do you end up with two headed cows? In the back when times, the domesticated cow was everywhere, a staple of American life. Menu boards from Vegas to Boston tell us that the Americans feasted on this fatty herbivore in the form of burgers and steaks. Today, we wastelanders indulge ourselves in much the same way. Brahmin are an integral part of daily life in most settlements. Their role in society has changed little in today's wasteland providing meat, milk, hide, and manual labor. Brahmin are also an essential part of trade. They'll often be found serving in caravans as pack animals. A naturally docile creature, the Brahmin will not attack unless provoked, charging and headbutting anything it perceives as a threat. Hmm. Well, still don't quite understand how we've got a two-headed cow, but... Oh, what are these here? Most mutated critters you'll encounter in the wasteland are the result of post-war nuclear fallout, but this isn't entirely the case with the Mirelurk. The first Mirelurks actually mutated shortly before the Great War due to radioactive pollutants in the North Atlantic. According to pre-war records, the Nahant Oceanological Society initially made these observations, and despite their reports, no one took their warning seriously. The Boston Port Authority ignored their calls. The Galaxy News Network turned the report into a story about how great shellfish season is going to be. Indeed, Mirelurk meat is tasty. Just be careful when extracting it. Like super mutants, Mirelurks never stop growing. Okay, that's... That's a problem. We're gonna have to get you back, McCready. I'm gonna have to get you back to uh, get your armor repaired. Ah, oh, okay. So those those big crab things are are myalurks. Oh, these are these are those moly rats that Piper said were mole rats. Records salvaged in Washington D.C. tell us of a government project codenamed Cloacina. The purpose of the project was to create an invasive life form that could be used against China during the war. It's theorized that at least some of the mutated rodents encountered on the East Coast today were a direct result of their experiments. Wow. For the past 200 years, rodents have been mutating at an astonishing rate. Where before they were mere pests, now they pose a serious threat to travelers at all corners of the wasteland. Small rodents still exist, but many are bigger than cats now. And the larger ones are as big as dogs, sometimes larger. Mutated rats aren't all bad, though. Some wastelanders have been able to tame them. Out west, they even okay. hold mole rat competitions. 
People raise them for food or keep them as pets. I distinctly recall a mining settlement that kept one as a pet. Snuffles, I think they named her. Ah, it's not worth it. Yeah, my gear's alright. I mean, you hadn't realised that thing exploded. I mean, it's truth. Right. Yeah, we're gonna get your gear fixed. I, I, I don't know how that Brahmin got in here and got stuck. There's one thing I find about this place is it's you just. When did that get out? Anyway, uh, what's up? Yeah, I need you to get out of your uh, your power armor. What's up? No problem. Thanks. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you're probably you've probably got the arm there, have you? I'm assuming you did pick it up. McCready, come here. Well, yeah, I need that. Split up the loot? No, I need the arm back. Wow, that's bad. I mean, that thing just exploded. It took out a lot of your armor. I'm really glad I gave you it, to be honest. Wow, that must mean some serious damage because I actually fixed all this. Okay, so it's just an arm and a leg that took damage. Right. That was a bit of a distraction, I think. Uh, I appreciate you're probably hungry, but... What do you want? Yeah, I, I want you to get back on the armor, mate. Yep, you got it. Oh, I better get something to drink. Um, take it you're with the minute then? I hope so, otherwise we've got somebody in the camp that's... Well, got a minute man musket. Hello? Yes? Yeah. Looks like he's with the minute man. That's, that's, that's a relief. Having strangers wandering into your base with a... Laser musket is, uh, well, it's a bit unsettling. Oh, this place is getting a bit of a stretch now that I brought Angel across. He's building up a, an industrial uh, facility, did you know that? Yeah, I've got him building an industrial facility over there. I'm hoping it'll help, help deal with the power. It's costing a lot to keep these power generators going. Pick an interesting house to build, like, but yeah. You know, each to their own. Right. Let's have a look. See what else is on this codex well rather. Hopefully we'll just be marching down there now. Uh ooh, Brad Roaches. Typically found in the irradiated dark recesses of the wasteland. Brad roaches are likely descended from the great American roach was first introduced to the United States from Africa in the early 16th century. Seen as little more than a nuisance to the citizens of the wasteland, their meat can be cooked for a less than savory treat. Some tribals on the west coast are known to use radroach innards in common treatments for radiation poisoning. Hmm. So I think that's always... Bugs, I thought they looked like uh, cockroaches or something, but they're called rad roaches. Okay, seems fitting. Uh, rad stags. The stag took a symbolic role in many old world religions due to their strength and grace. I'm curious to know if such a designation would be given to them today. Rad stags are descended from the common deer. Two headed like the Brahmin, each head can act autonomously from the other. These creatures usually travel in herds, and although they are generally non-hostile, 
They can put up a good fight if provoked. So that's what the two-headed deer is. It's a it's a rad stag. Seems fitting then. Stag affected by radiation. Okay. Uh, sting wings. Sting wings are mutated from scorpion flies. They typically build large clusters of nests, which they'll defend with ferocity should a wastelander wander too close. I hear stingwing barbs can be collected to craft special syringes capable of paralysis. Mm, that's not helpful, but I think I know what he means, because I, I did find a stingwing barb in my time. I think it's those big, kind of like giant mosquito things, I think. Blood flies. Books uncovered from before the war link the mutated bloatfly to its less vindictive cousin, the horsefly. Mm. From what I gather, in the back when times, the horsefly was prevalent worldwide. So it's likely you'll encounter the bloatfly no matter which part of the world you call home these days. What makes the bloatfly dangerous is its stinger, which it uses to launch larvae at its prey. These barbed stingers latch onto a victim releasing a neurotoxin which allows the bloat fly and its larvae to feed together. Ew. The traveling wastelander, this overgrown bug won't pose much of a threat, seeing as its neurotoxin isn't all that effective against larger mammals. Just be sure to keep it away from the kids. Oh, I know. If it's what I think it is, it's that, uh, it's that big giant fly that, um... And that was doing quite a bit of damage when there's a few of them as well to keep getting at you. Uh, yeah, we know about Soltrons. The Soltron is one of Robco's one. more slender and elegant creations, and one of their deadliest. As its name suggests, the Soltron was built with one thing in mind combat. You can see this in every aspect of its design. The small, slender frame is covered in thick armored here. plating to make it difficult wow. to take down at range. Not going to need that stuff anymore. It packs one serious punch with high-powered claws and a death ray to boot. Really? The United States military would have used them on the front lines, cleaving and piercing oh. through the trenches. Want to be in there. I imagine the trenches would have been their natural environment in Alaska and Beijing, especially considering the stealth field some of these models carry. They remain as lethal today as they were centuries ago, if not as robots, then as armor worn by raiders and salvagers. Bits of them can be of use as weapons. Though I'm told it's better to wear leaden underwear if you want to fire that laser and still have a family one day. <laughs> Hello! Best scrap in the Commonwealth right here. Yep, uh, let's have a look. Right. I think it's rounds that I'm looking for. Well, you've got a few. I'll have them from you. Any interesting food? Oh, I don't really want to be eating any cats. Uh, that'll do, mate. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, lots of cats. I think that explains the cat meat. Come on. Come on, you two. Probably a dumb idea coming out here in the dark. Uh, we know about iBots, but whatever. A marvelous little invention by Robco Industries. The iBot is a surprisingly versatile robotic companion. Incorporating advanced facial and auditory recognition technology, it was designed as a companion. Following you everywhere is a convenient link to the outside world. Radio, television, terminal, Portable workshop? The iBot has it all. The military was quick to adapt its design, thus turning the iBot into a floating propaganda and surveillance machine, complete with additional armor and a laser. The Army also created several derived medical and engineering designs for use in cutting edge military bases across the United States. All part of a trend to mechanize and automate so that more fodder would be available for the grinder in China. Hold on. Yeah, 
wasn't sure if I've already been here. Don't recognize the place, but. I'm near. I'm quite near Arkchef. Yeah, I think. I think I've been here before. That looks like Arkchef. Yeah, I think that's Arkchef down there. Right. Uh, right, I'm down to one core. Okay, that's not good. Right, let's have a look. Uh, right, well, we found ghouls and feral ghouls, so let's see what we can learn about ghouls. When humans are exposed to radiation, a variety of things can happen. Most will die an excruciatingly painful death as their body fails, even with proper anti-radiation treatment. Some will survive, albeit suffer from cancer and sterility. Mm. Finally, a number will go on to become ghouls. A ghoul is a mutated human whose exposure to radiation resulted in changes including, but not limited to, loss of skin, skeletal and muscular deformations, damage to connective tissue akin to leprosy, hair loss, necrosis, arthritis, and rot. It's a laundry list of unpleasantness, but there are upsides. The radiation that warps a human into a ghoul also causes them to regenerate spontaneously, giving immunity to common diseases, radiation, and offsetting the deleterious effects of mutation. The mutation in the spinal cord responsible for this feat also ensures ghouls can live indefinitely provided they avoid any major trauma to their cardiovascular or respiratory systems. Despite these mutations and their horrifying appearance, ghouls are still fundamentally human. They require water and food to survive. Is there any more? Wow, that thing just came out of nowhere. Okay, this, this is clearly a bad idea. I don't think there's anything anywhere to sleep here. I don't remember seeing anything near a trailer park. Um, tell you what, I think we're just going to wait it out. This is just, I mean, I don't know what we're walking into. That facility's not it's not working for a reason. I mean maybe there's some raiders or something down there. Um I think we'll wait it out here for the night. Yeah, there's nowhere to sleep but At least it's a damn sight safer. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here for the night, guys. It's not even midnight, but I'm not comfortable going out there. Not after that Yaguai, as we now learn. Suddenly jumped out on me. Right, we'll wait here until uh, first light. Right, okay, guys, let's let's get a move on. I think it's still a bit dark outside, but hopefully it'll uh, lighten up once we get there. Yeah, shouldn't be too long before the sun's up. It's not too dark, I mean, you can see the lights are over there of Diamond City. See about these feral ghouls and so we've met ghouls, so what about these feral ghouls? Why do, why have we got ghouls that attack us? Ghouls already lead a hard life in the wasteland, beset by prejudice from all sides. As if that wasn't enough, they can become feral, degenerating into a wild animal kept alive by radiation, interested only in slaughter and gorging itself on whatever it manages to kill. 
It's a fate worse than death. Why ghouls go feral is still not entirely understood. You'd think that after two centuries, we would know what causes it. So we could come up with a solution. Our best guess is that exposure to intense levels of ionizing radiation or other environmental factors cause a rapid degeneration of higher brain functions and regression into a primal feral state. Feral ghouls typically cluster in groups and attack whatever disturbs them, uttering a screech that lures other ghouls that will attack in turn. Well, with the central nervous system atrophied, Feral ghouls are not bound by human limiters on muscle use, making their strikes far more deadly. The process of ghoulification is sadly irreversible, and since they don't die out like humans do, feral ghoul populations have been a plague on the wasteland for centuries, from Necropolis to Boston. Wow. Social isolation seems to be a factor in causing a ghoul to go feral. Although it's anyone's guess just how impactful it can be. As communities of ghouls are also known to suffer from their members going feral. Oh, crap. It's worse. And this is... Yeah, this is the place, guys, and it's... It's not rain as we have to worry about. It's bomb super mutants. Oh... Brother, this is not good. Okay. Really wish I had a silencer. <sighs> Can't quite tell how many they are. Is that a dog over there? Yeah, the dogs are pretty vicious. So I get a higher ground. Oh! Is that the Brotherhood of Steel? Well, that could be quite beneficial actually if they've, if they've already got a gun for. Oh well, no. Pretty sure we're not alone. Yeah, we seem to have. We've walked into a gunfight here. I'm assuming they're the Brotherhood of Steel are the only ones I know with Verti Birds. It's actually not too bad, actually, this light level is quite low, so hopefully I've got the advantage. Is that a Who's that? Is that McCready? I mean, laser fire suggests it's the Brotherhood of Steel down there, but... Have you got in there, McCready, with your... Where the heck are you, McCready? Oh, there you are. I saw somebody running around in power armor over there, and I just assumed it was you, mate. Uh, well, let's press on and see what we're going to find. I don't know who won that skirmish. Oh, there's a dog wandering around. Watch it, McCready. so much we've got uh, power armor on. It's not as damaging. Hmm. Okay, so this... I think it's safe to say this place is occupied by super mutants. That might explain why the place isn't working. I suppose it's possible there could be more of them inside. But let's clear this place out. Make sure there's none on the surface at least. If 
so we'll go in there. Hmm. I mean, I'm assuming that was Brotherhood of Steel who came in there. The big. Oh, hello. Oh, dog meat, dog meat. That was way too close. You want to be more careful where you're stepping. It's really three weights, three weights. Fusion cells are what I need. I suppose mutants aren't all that interested in them. Uh, hello, what's that? Uh, seriously, dog meat. Must be a bomb somewhere. Or a gunner. It usually is. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Seems a strange thing for super mutants to, to do. I mean, you talk about fiddly things, bombs. Unless they came in here and took on. Took on raiders and cleared it out or something. Took over the place. It does seem a bit odd. Ugh. He's gonna throw up. Well. Oh, there's some more there I just got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, there's a fusion core! Oh, ho, 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 excellent! That's, that's a good find, that. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, back up. I'm not sure if this is a... Is this Brotherhood of Steel? I don't know if these are Brotherhood of Steel guys. Um, hello? Are you are you friend or foe? Are you with the Brotherhood of Steel? Well, you don't seem hostile. Oh, drat. Could have really done with that. Mini gun. Oh, they're gunners. Uh, guys. Let's not hang around. Uh, hang her around around her because she's uh, she's she's a gunner. I think somebody must have paid paid them to come in, or they're going to try and set up a base here themselves. I'll clear the place out anyway before they get their dirty mitts on it. Where's McCready? McCready? Come here a minute. What's up? I need you to carry some yeah, things for sure. me. Sure, I'll trade with you. Got a few too many things on me. Right, that'll do. This looks like there's a something on the roof, but I'll just get these uh, tin cans if I can, because that'll get me some steel. Uh, I can't reach them. I can't seem to reach them. Never mind. Never mind. There's a little shack over there. I want to have a look at. Three weights. Oh, clue. Just what I need. Uh, let me pick that up. 
I just dump these. I don't need this super mutant crap. Not as if we're going to have any super mutants suddenly like come on board and offer to help. Wow, there's, there's a couple of there. A couple of them dead down here. Yep, three wits. Yep, just the sort of ammo I need actually. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grab a bit of sleep. I think it's still a bit early. It's not too. It's not too early. I'm just gonna grab a. Grab a few hours since I didn't get any sleep last night. And then we'll. We'll press on into this place. But keep an eye out for that gunner over there. See if any others might come come in. I mean, she didn't seem threatening. I don't really want to kill somebody for just for the sake of killing them. I mean, that's, well, that's just plain murder, quite frankly. I'm going to get a few hours and then we'll go in. <laughs> 